everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs. This is Ron's Rundown, running over the MLB game scheduled for Sunday, April 14th, 2024. If you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my daily rundown best bet in the MLB, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Sunday in Major League Baseball. First up, we see the New York Yankees taking on the Cleveland Guardians. Nestor Cortez and Logan Allen are your starters. So a pair of lefties on the mound in this one. You know, Nestor Cortez put together bet definitely his best start of the season in his last game. He was able to go eight innings of work, no earned runs against the Marlins. I know it's the Miami Marlins, but still six strikeouts in a 7 0 Yankees win. I think Cortez also in that previous game against the Diamondbacks, while it wasn't great early on, he was able to settle in and look solid towards the end of that outing. So he's starting to pitch well. And I think against a Guardians team that I'd much rather back against a righty than lefty, I think Cortez pitches well in this game. Now, on the other side, Logan Allen, I watched his last game against the White Sox. And while it wasn't great, you know, that the White Sox were able to get to him early on, I think five runs in the first inning. I think he was rather unlucky. He didn't give up a single home run. Uh, there was a lot of, you know, ground ball base hits, some, you know, line drive or ground ball down the line base hits that ended up as doubles. Uh, you know, he still had four strikeouts in four innings, no home runs, like I said, and only one walk. I think he it was more of an unlucky start than anything else. And he was able to settle down as the outing continued. He was able to give the Guardians some innings, some, you know, much needed innings in that game. And before that, he was pitching really well. He went five innings with three runs against the A's. Not the best start, but still a win for Cleveland. And then six and two thirds, a shutout baseball against the Mariners with six strikeouts back on April 3rd. I'm going to go with the under here. I lean towards the Yankees as well, but give me the under in Yankees Guardians. Next up, we see the Los Angeles Angels taking on the Boston Red Sox. Tyler Anderson and Brian Bayo are your starters. You know, Brian Bayo, I say, is his best when he's keeping the ball on the ground and getting those ground ball outs. But that ground ball percentage, you know, he had an 8 to 10 ground ball to fly ball ratio last game. Not great, you know, under 50%. And he's not really missing a ton of bats. I think he's going to be in trouble in this game against an Angels lineup that may be top-heavy, you know, with guys like Trout at the top of the lineup. But I still think they can get to him for a few runs. And so also, you know, Brian Bayo, like I said, he's best when he's keep, keeping the ball on the ground. But I don't even trust this Red Sox infield defense right now to put away those ground ball outs. We saw that in the Orioles game, the final game of the series, where the Red Sox infield defense, I would say, cost the, the Red Sox that game as they missed, a, you know, a key double play that would have got him out of the inning. It would have been a two to one Red Sox lead going into the ninth, at least, or maybe you know maybe they would have scored in the bottom of the eighth. But they missed a double play, and the next pitch, Anthony Santander, two run home run, and the Orioles went on to win that game. So I think the Red Sox infield defense is it's questionable right now. The Red Sox bullpen also not the best, and with Tyler Anderson on the other side, two note that's you know no earned runs given up. He's been sharp. He was great in spring training. He's, he's pitching deep into ball games. Give me the Angels here on the money line. Next up, we see the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the Baltimore Orioles. Colin Ray and Corbin Burns are your starters. You know, the Orioles have not been a great first five innings team this year, but I actually like them in the first five in this game as Corbin Burns has been the ace that they need him to be. He's got, you know, the first three games, the Orioles have won all three of his starts. Even that one game against the Royals where he didn't have his best stuff, he still gave him five and two-thirds of two-run baseball, and the Orioles were able to win that game in the end. And in this game, I think the offense gets going early against Ray. Somebody I expect to regress as the season continues. He's pitched well this year. Got to give him credit. And then the Brewers have won first, each of his first two starts. But only five strikeouts in 11 innings is a big concern for me. I know he's a pitch-to-contact guy. This is a really good Orioles lineup this year. I'm going to go with the Orioles on the money line in the first five innings, or you can lay a half a run as well in the first five. Next up, we see the Pittsburgh Pirates taking on the Philadelphia Phillies. Mitch Keller and Zach Wheeler are your starters you know, Mitch Keller, I mentioned, he's a starter that I'd much rather back at PNC Park. We saw him make his home debut in that last game against the Tigers where he went in you know, a quality start, his first quality start of the season. Six innings, two runs, nine strikeouts, and no home runs. to give up the control was still off a little bit, but it was still a 7-4 to four Pirates win in the end. But before that game, it was two road starts against the Marlins and Nationals. Not great lineups, and still Keller gave up in 11 innings combined, 15 base hits, 10, 10 total runs, eight of those were earned a home run and four walks and his strikeout stuff wasn't the best either. So now on the road against a solid lineup in the Phillies, it may be off to a little bit of a slow start this year, but still we know how dangerous it can be and facing a starting pitcher. That's not going to give up much too often. Zach Wheeler. I know the Phillies have not backed him up in the run support department to start the year, but I think they do a better job here. And Wheeler's been solid. He got a 1.89 ERA, 20 strikeouts in 19 innings, only the one home run and only two walks. His per nines are excellent right now. Give me the Phillies on the run line in this one.
Next up, we see the Toronto Blue Jays taking on the Colorado Rockies. Kyle Freeland and Jose Barrios are your starters. Yeah, I mentioned that the Blue Jays are up to a slow start offensively against right-handed pitching, but against lefties, they've been able to crush them. I mean, they're top 10 in baseball and OPS, top 5 in isolated power against lefties to start the 2024 campaign. Good walk rate, low strikeout rate, exactly what you want to see. And Kyle Freeland's not been great this season, 16.03 ERA. He's had a couple of road starts. He's had a game at Coors Field. And believe it or not, the game at Coors Field was his best start of the season where he gave up two earned runs in uh, five innings of work against Arizona. And that was a win for Colorado. But on the road, we've seen him give up 17 earned runs and 19 base hits. I just can't trust him here. Give me the Blue Jays, land the one and a half runs. But Rios also, you got to mention, he's a good option for Toronto. He's pitching well this season. Give me Toronto, land the one and a half runs. Next up, it's the Atlanta Braves taking on the Miami Marlins. Charlie Morton and Jesus Lazardo are your starters. And Jesus Lazardo, I think this is going to be a solid outing for him. You know, we mentioned that the Braves have not been the best against lefties to start the year. They're much better against right in pitching, where they're arguably the best lineup in baseball. And we know Lazardo struggled in that last game at Yankee Stadium, but last year he wasn't great on the road in general. He was much better at Lone Depot. I think he bounces back here. We know he still has really good strikeout stuff. If he can just watch that control, he can be a really good, you know, one of the better pitchers in the National League, honestly. He's got the talent to do so. And Charlie Morton, while he pitched well against the Marlins the first couple of games last year, his last start against Miami towards the end of the season where the Marlins, you know, made those trade deadline pickups with guys like Berger and Bell, they were able to get to Morton in that game. It was a four, four and two-thirds innings of Charlie Morton, six base hits, six earned runs, and a home run with five walks to go with it. That was at Lone Depot Park, and that was a 16-2 to two Marlins win. I know the Marlins are playing a little bit different than they did last year, than last year's a playoff team, but I still think the value is certainly there with the Marlins in this game. I'm going to go with Miami on the money line in this one. Next up, we see the Kansas City Royals taking on the New York Mets. Cole Reagans for Kansas City. No official starter for the Mets. Now, Cole Reagans last start against the Astros. He didn't have his best stuff, that's for sure. But it just goes to show you the top-level pitchers in the league, even when they don't have their best stuff going, they can still find a way to keep their team competitive in ballgames. And that's exactly what Reagans did. He gave up 10 base hits in that game against the Astros, but he ended up only giving up three runs. And the, and the Royals wanted to win that game in extra innings, 4-3. to three. He kept them alive. He got out of a, so many jams, you know, bases loaded, runners on, you know, second and third, you name it. He got out of a lot of jams in that game, and he had five strikeouts still and no home runs given up. The control was there. It was a lot of dink and dunk base hits for the Astros. Some sharp contact as well that, you know, Reagan's has to monitor as the season goes along. But still, I think Reagan's still one of the best pitchers in the league right now. I think he pitches well against the Mets team. It's, he actually has decent numbers against lefties to start the season, but... I think Reagan is going to be the much better option. We'll have to see the official starter is for New York, but I'm going to go with Kansas City on the money line in this one. Next up, we see the Detroit Tigers taking on the Minnesota Twins. Bailey Ober and Jack Flaherty are your projected starters. You know, the Detroit Tigers last year did pretty well against Bailey Ober, especially the game on August 9th where they had 11 base hits on him. And we mentioned that, you know, the, that Bailey Ober throws a lot of strikes, doesn't really have too many issues with the walks, but sometimes those strikes hang over the heart of the plate. We saw it was a big problem against the Royals in the first game of the season. Not so much in the next outing, but I do think Detroit will be able to get to him for a few runs early on. I think Flaherty, it's tough to trust him, but I still he's still gone six innings each of his first two games. He's been able to miss some bats. The walks, the, the, the per nine numbers are solid. Home runs per nine, walks per nine, strikeouts per nine. So I'm going to go with the Detroit Tigers here on the money line at Comerica Park. I lean towards the over as well. We see the San Francisco Giants taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. No official starter for Tampa Bay, but Zach Eflin's listed on ESPN, so he could very well be the starter. Blake Snell should be going for San Francisco. Man, this is a tough one for me. I'm going to lean towards the under, believe it or not. You know, if you watch the rundown the last couple of years, or you know, you last you, you watched last week with Blake Snell on the mound against Washington. You know we fade Blake Snell early in the season. He's a little bit of a slow starter, and then we certainly back him plenty of times at the end of the year because we know that's when he gets going, and we saw him as you know the Cy Young last year in the National League. We faded him in that first game against Washington. It wasn't a great spot for him. He signed late in the offseason, wasn't able to have a spring training, and we took the plus 200 on the money line in that game. It wasn't the most popular play, that's for sure, but the Nationals won that game in blowout fashion 8-1. to one. But now in this game, I think Blake Snell is a much better matchup here. It's nice to see him have that one game under his belt. I think there were some issues in that game that weren't necessarily his pitching. His control was certainly off a little bit. He, he got behind a lot in the counts, but he still had five strikeouts in three innings. No home runs given up, and he didn't give up a lot of sharp contact. 
A lot of it was stolen bases from the Nationals. They were taking advantage of him not being 100% in the game in terms of the fielding. There was one that was a ground ball to the first baseman. Snell was kind of delayed in getting to first base because he wasn't used to those kind of things that pitchers work on in spring training. So I think Snell's going to be fine. And I think against his former team, you know, it's a big spot here against your former team. And against the Tampa Bay Rays team, it's not great offensively against lefties. They strike out quite a bit. I think Snell pitches well, maybe four to five good innings. Eflin's a good option on the other side for Tampa Bay, and I think this Rays bullpen improves. Even the Giants bullpen, I think both will improve as the season goes along. They have pretty steep ERAs right now, but I think they're a lot better than that. Give me the under here in San Francisco, Tampa Bay. Next up, it's the Cincinnati Reds taking on the Chicago White Sox. Graham Ashcraft and Michael Soroka are your projected starters. I mentioned that Ashcraft has just been really inconsistent in the last couple of years, and we've seen that in his first two starts. We have one really good quality start against the Phillies, and then one game against the Brewers where he gives up those five earned home run, five and two-thirds innings, nine base hits. Not what you want to see. But this game's going to be on the road away from the hitter-friendly Great American Ballpark, which, you know, that was where he struggled against Milwaukee. And I think he pitches well in this game. He still has really good strikeout stuff. I think he has a lot of potential. I think if he can just find that consistency, he can be a really good option in, in one of the better pitchers in the National League Central. And Michael Soroka, not my favorite option. He's given up at least one home run in each of his first three games. The strikeout number is kind of all over the place. Doesn't really miss a lot of bats. And I think that the Reds get to him for a few runs early on. And even if they don't, they should be able to get to this White Sox bullpen. So give me the Cincinnati Reds on the money line. Next up, we see the Houston Astros hosting the Texas Rangers. Nathan Avaldi and Christian Avier are your starters. Now, it's a matchup here with two starting pitchers with sub-two ERAs. However, I think Nathan Avaldi has been the much more sustainable option. I mean, Christian Avier, while he's pitched well, we saw in that last game against Kansas City, had some issues giving up a lot of base runners, and the Royals were able to get to him finally in the final inning of his outing. And you know, we've seen eight walks now in his last 10 and third innings with not under a strikeout per inning this season. So the 9, nine to 13 uh, walk-to-strikeout ratio is frightening to me when you go up against the Texas Rangers. I think Javier could be in trouble in this game. Like I said, I think of all these, been the much more sustainable option. He's been able to miss bats. He had 16 strikeouts his last 12 and two-thirds innings. He's only given up one earned run his last two starts. He's doing a better job of keeping the ball on the ground, in my opinion. I'm going to go with the Rangers here on the money line on the road. Next up, we see the Washington Nationals taking on the Oakland Athletics. We see Trevor Williams and Alex Wood as your starters. Yeah, Trevor Williams has made a career of just giving his teams much-needed innings, and we've seen that in the, when he's out of the bullpen or in a starting pitching role like we see him this year. And you know, so far, the Nationals are 2-0 in his first two games. That last game, they were a plus-200 money line dog. That was the game against Blake Snell on August 8th. And so he's been one of the more profitable pitchers to start this season. And, you know, he, the, the expected numbers aren't the best. He doesn't really earn a ton of strikeouts. But he goes out there and gives you solid, you know, five, five and a third, six innings at a clip. And it keeps the team in ball games And I think against Alex Wood, you know, a, a starting pitcher that I think his ERA doesn't tell the full story. I think he's a lot better than that current ERA. I think he's going to improve as the season goes along. I still think he's not going to be good enough, especially with that Oakland A's lineup and bullpen to back him up to win this game. So give me the Washington Nationals on the money line on the road. Next up, we see the Chicago Cubs taking on the Seattle Mariners. Javier Assad and Luis Castillo are your starters. Until I see Luis Castillo put together a solid start, I just can't get there with the Mariners. I mean, he is just giving up way too many base runners, too many earned runs. The strikeout stuff's been there, but 19 base hits in your last 10 two-thirds innings. I know the BABIP is through the roof, but still, it was something we saw in spring training, and we've seen it each and every start so far in the regular season, and three losses now, not just for the Mariners, but all the losses have gone to Luis Castillo. He's 0-3. I just can't get there. I mean, Assad's been pitching well. He wasn't great in spring, but his first two starts, 11 innings, two earned runs, and 12 strikeouts. I, I think the Cubs lineup gets to Castillo, and they win this game. Give me the Cubs on the money line. Next up, we see the St. Louis Cardinals taking on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Miles Michaelis and Zach Gallen are your starters. I'm going to take a shot here with St. Louis in this game, and it's not because I think Zach Gallen's pitching poorly. I think he's pitching very, very well. He's got 2.25 ERA. Strikeout numbers are there. Even his last game where it wasn't the best numbers and the Diamondbacks ended up losing, it was at Coors Field. So you'll take five innings of three-run ball at Coors all day long, especially when you, have, when you add 10 strikeouts, no walks, and no home runs. So I think Gallon pitches well in this game. The problem for me is I think Michaelis also pitches well. He's got two quality starts in a row now after a rough uh, opening, you know, his, his, a rough opening day against the Dodgers. He went six innings, two runs against the Padres, six and two thirds, uh, two runs against the Phillies. So much, much better outings for Michaelis. And if this is a close game late and a low scoring game late, which I expect it to be, 
the Cardinals have the better bullpen, in my opinion, when you look at the projected war, St. Louis is top five in baseball right now. So I think there's certainly value with St. Louis at this kind of price, taking them on the money line. Give me the Cardinals on the money line. And the final game we're going to talk about for the Sunday card in Major League Baseball, it's the Los Angeles Dodgers and the San Diego Padres. This one Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN. And you, Darvish and James Paxton are your projected starters. And this is a game where I just think there's value with San Diego because San Diego has crushed lefties this year. The number two in OPS, number one in isolated power, high walk rate. You're facing James Paxton, who's pitched well this year. However, when you look at the numbers, he's got nine strikeouts in 11 innings of work. So under a strikeout per inning, he adds six walks to that. That's concerning for me. He gave up a home run in the last game against Minnesota. So the per nines are not amazing. The home runs per nine certainly where it needs to be. But the, the walks are a concern. And with San Diego doing so well against lefties and you Darvish pitching so well against the Dodgers last year, he went a combined 13 and two-thirds innings against L.A. with only uh, three earned runs. He pitched really well against the Dodgers. I think he does so here. Give me the San Diego Padres in this one on the money line. And that's it. Those are the baseball games for Sunday. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and put your baseball picks in the comments section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. There's also a link in the description. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.